This chapter is from the book, Psychology Second Edition, by Rose Spielman, William Jenkins, and Marilyn Lovett. You can find the link to the text in the description below. Gestalt Principles of Perception Learning Objectives By the end of this section, you will be able to explain the figure-ground relationship. Define Gestalt Principles of Grouping Describe how perceptual set is influenced by an individual's characteristics and mental state. In the early part of the 20th century, Max Wertheimer published a paper demonstrating that individuals perceived motion in rapidly flickering static images, an insight that came to him as he used a child's toy to kistoscope. Wertheimer, and his assistants Wolfgang Kohler and Kurt Kafka, who later became his partners, believed that perception involved more than simply combining sensory stimuli. This belief led to a new movement within the field of psychology known as Gestalt psychology. The word Gestalt literally means form or pattern, but its use reflects the idea that the whole is different from the sum of its parts. In other words, the brain creates a perception that is more than simply the sum of available sensory inputs, and it does so in predictable ways. Gestalt psychologists translated these predictable ways into principles by which we organize sensory information. As a result, Gestalt psychology has been extremely influential in the area of sensation and perception. Rock and Palmer, 1990. One Gestalt principle is the figure ground relationship. According to this principle, we tend to segment our visual world into figure and ground. Figure is the object or person that is the focus of the visual field, while the ground is the background. As figure 5.25 shows, our perception can vary tremendously, depending on what is perceived as figure and what is perceived as ground. Presumably, our ability to interpret sensory information depends on what we label as figure and what we label as ground in any particular case, although this assumption has been called into question. Peterson and Gibson, 1994, Becerra and O'Reilly, 1998. Another Gestalt principle for organizing sensory stimuli into meaningful perception is proximity. This principle asserts that things that are close to one another tend to be grouped together as figure 5.26 illustrates. How we read something provides another illustration of the proximity concept. For example, we read this sentence like this, not li ket hiso rt hat. We group the letters of a given word together because there are no spaces between the letters, and we perceive words because there are spaces between each word. Here are some more examples. Can he oum aix nco featuring his entence? What doth s e war d s m e a n? We might also use the principle of similarity to group things in our visual fields. According to this principle, things that are alike tend to be grouped together. Figure 5.27. For example, when watching a football game, we tend to group individuals based on the colors of their uniforms. When watching an offensive drive, we can get a sense of the two teams simply by grouping along this dimension. Two additional Gestalt principles are the law of continuity, or good continuation, and closure. The law of continuity suggests that we are more likely to perceive continuous, smooth flowing lines rather than jagged, broken lines, figure 5.28. The principle of closure states that we organize our perceptions into complete objects rather than as a series of parts, figure 5.29. According to Gestalt theorists, Pattern perception, or our ability to discriminate among different figures and shapes, occurs by following the principles described above. You probably feel fairly certain that your perception accurately matches the real world, but this is not always the case. Our perceptions are based on perceptual hypotheses. Educated guesses that we make while interpreting sensory information. These hypotheses are informed by a number of factors, including our personalities, experiences, and expectations. We use these hypotheses to generate our perceptual set. For instance, research has demonstrated that those who are given verbal priming produce a biased interpretation of complex ambiguous figures. Gul Kashin and Woodbury, 2010. Dig deeper. The depths of perception, bias, prejudice, and cultural factors. In this chapter, you have learned that perception is a complex process. 
built from sensations, but influenced by our own experiences, biases, prejudices, and cultures, perceptions can be very different from person to person. Research suggests that implicit racial prejudice and stereotypes affect perception. For instance, several studies have demonstrated that non-black participants identify weapons faster and are more likely to identify non-weapons as weapons when the image of the weapon is paired with the image of a black person. Payne, 2001. Payne, Shimizu, and Jacoby, 2005. Furthermore, white individuals' decisions to shoot an armed target in a video game is made more quickly when the target is black. Carell, Park, Judd, and Wittenbrink, 2002. Carell, Erland, and Ito, 2006. This research is important, considering the number of very high-profile cases in the last few decades in which black people were killed by people who claimed to believe that the unarmed individuals were armed and or represented some threat to their personal safety.